Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Lisa Dietrich, pastor here at Fredsville. And if you are a guest with us this morning, we welcome you to all the ministries we have to offer. I do have uh, three clipboards that I'm going to pass. One is for our, I'm not going to drop them. I'm going to be okay. One is for our May volunteers. So we're looking for ushers, greeters, that kind of thing. This coming Saturday, we are doing a quilting retreat here, and so I encourage you to sign up for that. Um, And just so if you're not a quilter, but you want a day set aside to stitch or embroider or knit or crochet, you can bring that along, sign up too, and um, then expect an email this week, and we'll talk about lunch and and how we're going to divide that up. And then the third clipboard is we're looking for volunteers for the clothing closet. And if you can help in the clothing closet, that would be wonderful. Um, This afternoon, we invite everyone to come back, bring some neighbors and some friends, some family members. At 1.30 this afternoon, um, we will be doing our Easter musical again for the community. And there will be a little bit of other special music as well and cookies and fellowship afterwards. The whole event will take about 45 minutes to an hour tops. Um, But come back this afternoon and and enjoy and come and laugh and and hear the Easter story proclaimed. Um, You are surrounded by pillowcase dresses. These are about 100 of almost 200 pillowcase dresses that a small group here at Fredsville has been working on. And these are all ready to be shipped out. They are made from simple pillowcases. That's what they are. Um, That being said, they're just gorgeous. They're just a lot of fun to make. If you want to join the group, come see me or Audrey Steffen. Audrey, just raise your hand, will you? You can see Audrey, and we'll get you hooked up with the group and when we meet. Um, But we are looking for more pillowcases. I think we only have about 20-some pillowcases left to make into dresses. And they don't have to be fancy, but the one request we would make is that they not be white. Little girls should not be running around in white see-through dresses, okay? Um, So just think about that. If the pillowcase is thin and you wouldn't want your little girl wearing it, um, maybe donate it to Goodwill for somebody to use that way. But any other pillowcases, we sure could use them, and we'll find a way to make them just as adorable as I'll get out. So... Um, If you can help with that, that would be wonderful. Um, We keep in our thoughts and prayers today Don Prusner. Don was um, moving an auger, using a riding lawnmower, moving an auger at the farm, and the auger tipped and fell on him and pinned him for over an hour. Um, After an hour, he was able to work his way out and get to the house and call for an ambulance. Um, He's at Allen Hospital. Nothing is broken by some act of God. It didn't hit him on the head. Um, And he's he's doing fine. He just hurts all over. And he's still in the hospital because of a low oxygen. So they're kind of working on some things there. But we certainly add Don in our prayers today and in the days ahead. And maybe Leona, too, for when Don went home. We'll add you to our prayers, too. Um, Eric, you have an announcement, please. Good morning. Um, They asked me to give a quick update on the building. Um, Monday, they plan on the texturing being done, and Tuesday, they're going to start painting. And all the cabinets and the tables and cupboards and things like that have been delivered, but they've not, they'll be set at a later date. So, and just a reminder that next Sunday is the final day of our fundraising challenge. Any contributions to the building fund that come in, between now and through next Sunday will be applied towards this most recent building update or phase four and then after that then contributions to the building fund will be uh, will go towards uh, both projects the existing one and uh, and whatever's left of this one Thank you. can you tell he's a farmer and he doesn't like microphones <laughs> Um, and just a reminder, you know, it's, it's simple math. Any donations that come in now, it's less money we have to borrow, less interest we pay. So if you can help out with that in any way, shape, or form, that would be great. Would you please stand, and we'll begin our service with the Thanksgiving for baptism. You stick this back here quick. As God's children, we, ga- we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness 
Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock. And you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and to freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please join me in sharing a sign of God's peace with one another.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O oh God. Let us pray. In all our grief and confusion, you walk alongside us, O Lord. Reveal yourself to us as the comforter of our souls and the savior of our lives, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those women, some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the same road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Thank you, Emily. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's still Easter morning. According to our scripture, it's the very same day. They've just gone to the tomb and they found it empty. And now we have on the very same day, on Easter morning, on Resurrection Day, we have Cleopas and his friend leaving town. And who could blame them? We don't know anything really about Cleopas and his friend. There are some assumptions made, some assumptions that theologians make. Number one is that Cleopas must be a man because he's named, and the friend must be a woman because, well, there is no name. But the truth is we don't know anything about them. We know that they must have been some followers of Jesus, and we know that they are getting out of Dodge, and I can't blame them one bit. After the events and everything they've seen that has taken place, they know if you were a follower of Jesus Christ and Jesus was crucified, you could very well be next, so now it's time to hightail it out of town. We also know from our scripture reading this morning that they are clearly disappointed. And they're walking along the road, and in their disappointment, and in their deep grief that Jesus, the one they thought that was going to, to save them and deliver Israel, is dead. They're walking along, just swallowed up and consumed in their grief, and along comes this guy who joins them on the road, who seems to know nothing about any of the events that have taken place. Now, because we know the rest of the story, if you will, we know that that person is Jesus. And I like to think that Jesus is kind of toying with them and having the time of his life, if you will. 
He's playing with them and kind of poking a stick and saying, what things is this that you're talking about? Now, who's going to know better than Jesus what happened, right? But here he is kind of poking a stick at them anyway. And when he asks them, what is it you're talking about? What things have taken place? They stop dead in their tracks. And they look at him with disbelief. And the scripture says they look at him and they are sad. They're sad. I find it remarkable that Luke's gospel, one of the very first stories in Luke's gospels, is Mary, the mother of Jesus, finding out that she's pregnant, and she starts singing this beautiful song, the Magnificat, as we call it. And so Luke's gospel starts with great joy and song and music. And here at the end of the gospel, we have Cleopas and his friend, and they're walking along the path and the trail and the road, and they're hangdogs, and their heads are hanging, and they are filled with sadness and grief. It's almost the reversal of what we want to have happen. How many of you read a book and it's okay if it starts sad, but by goodness you want it to end happy and you want everything tied up and neat at the end of it, right? And it seems like we have the opposite, that our story starts with great joy and song and music and Mary singing to God's glory, and then we have Cleopas and his friend, deep in grief. But the truth is, we know that that is not the end of the story, not by a long shot. There's yet another reversal that's going to happen. Now, we cannot talk about this text, or at least least I, as a female pastor, and not talk about the women and the women in this story. It is the women who go to the tomb this morning. It is the women who find the tomb empty. It is the women that the angel speaks to, or Jesus speaks to, and says, you don't need to be afraid. I'm risen from the dead. And it is the women who gather up their skirts, and they run down the road, and they bust through the door, and they tell the men. But because that's not good enough, Even in our story this morning, because you could not trust a woman's story and a woman legally could not testify in a court of law in Jesus' day, it's not going to be okay. And so the, the men then gather up their skirts and they go running down the garden road and they look in the tomb and lo and behold, it's just as the women said. Huh, go figure. But they did not see him. And so at this point, because they see it just as the women told them, but they did not see him, all we're left with is an idle tale or maybe a bunch of crap, depending on who you are and where this lands. But reminded, there's another reversal about to come. They're walking down the road. Jesus is walking with Cleopas and his friend, and he's unpacking the scripture from the beginning of Moses, and he goes all the way through the scripture and the prophets, and he tells them, wasn't all of this supposed to take place? But they still don't get it. And now it's getting dark, and Cleopas and his friends say, look, it's getting dark. It's dangerous on this road. Come and stay with us. And in the invitation to hospitality, and the invitation to come and dwell with them at the table and in the breaking of the bread, their eyes are opened. When Jesus shares of himself, of his body and blood, all of a sudden they see for the first time the resurrected Lord. Not because the scriptures have been opened, but because they encountered Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And our story has the ultimate reversal. And the story ends with them then running with their skirts in their hands, running to tell the disciples, we have seen the resurrected Christ. He was with us. We walked along with him. He told us everything we had heard before. He made him come alive and he ate with us. The resurrected Christ was not a ghost. But he ate bread and wine and a meal with us, and then he disappeared. 
Just like that. But it's okay because in our scripture it also says he appeared to Simon. And in the weeks ahead, you're going to find that he appeared to more than 500 people. The resurrected Christ doesn't just show up once, raised from the dead, and gone. But he continues to appear over and over and over again. And he does so today. In the proclamation of the word, you hear and encounter Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Once and for all, for you. And in the breaking of the bread, you're invited to come and taste and see. See again for the first time that Christ has been raised and is glorious and is for you. That salvation has been won. The cross and the devil has been defeated. And salvation is forever yours. So when you leave here today, I want to see your skirts gathered up. I want to see you running and screaming. Christ has been raised from the dead. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. Our eyes often fail to see what we don't believe to be possible. Open us to your real presence among us, your blessing and your promise fulfilled. Lord, in your mercy, Reveal to us the paths that lead to renewal for all and for all things. Make us the agents of reconciliation and restoration of an earth used and abused, that all creatures may participate in your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Just when all hope seems lost, you step into our despair and demonstrate God's promises fulfilled. Continue walking with us when our excitement fades and doubt sets in once more. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort those who grieve with no expectation of relief and heal those who suffer. We lift you especially Lillian, Maggie, Alma, Vern, Neil, Don, and all others we name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Unbelievable though it may sound, this is our proclamation, that our Lord was crucified but rose again to reconcile the world to its creator. Make us bold in our witness that others might hear and be transformed. Lord, in your mercy. Stay with us, Lord. Hear our prayers and open your arms in welcome to your children. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we continue our worship with the collecting of the offering.
Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ. our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so at the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you. God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the and merciful God, everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension. We pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Empower us by that same Spirit to love and forgive, that our lives may anticipate that day when you will make all things new. Gather our prayers with those of the apostles, prophets, martyrs, and all the faithful who have gone before us, and unite them with the unceasing prayer of the one who lives in us and in whom we live, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, the unity of the Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, O God, now and Please join hands and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come for all has been prepared. This morning for communion, you will come down the center aisle, receive bread in hand, and either dip it in the first cup holding wine or the second cup holding juice, and then return by the side aisles. But please come for all are welcome at this table. You may be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look on us with favor and give us peace.